What's up, boys and girls? Welcome to part five of the Lightburn for Galvo crash course. Last episode, we took a look at some of our device settings and what they do and how they're set and when we're gonna cover them in the crash course. If you haven't watched it, go watch the last episode. Uh, picking up from there, I think we're gonna spend this episode just trying to talk about all of the different kind of tools and features that are built into Lightburn for actually creating artwork. This is an area where Lightburn completely blows EasyCAD out of the water. There are so many handy features and tools built into Lightburn that allow you to really get creative with your artwork and make a lot of processing in external programs like AI or Inkscape uh, unnecessary. And don't get me wrong, I still really, at the end of the day, highly prefer using an external editor. I think it's good to have that skill because they are typically a little more fleshed out, but knowing how to operate well inside of Lightburn can save you a ton of time, especially on quick fixes when you've just noticed something small that needs to be changed or you just need to do a really quick trace. You can do it all in Lightburn. You don't need to worry about any other software. So this won't be the most thorough, okay? We'll break down the individual components that make up the Lightburn graphics editing suite at a later date. We'll, we'll get more into detail with it. I just want to kind of show you around today so that you kind of understand what you're looking at while you're in here, just trying to get basic stuff done uh, because there are a lot of buttons. There's a lot going on. So let's start by just looking around at some of the different panels and buttons, right? Let's let's get explanations on these. Up at the top bar here, we've got a couple basic things. We've got new file, open a file, save a file, import a file. So if we want to import something like a picture or a logo, we can import it there. We have undo and redo, copy, cut, paste and delete. And of course there's keyboard shortcuts for all of this guys. We have pan or drag, which we can do by clicking this and then clicking around, or we can just simply hold the middle mouse button and move the view around that way. So very easy. You can zoom to page, you can zoom in, zoom out, zoom to selection. So if we have a circle, right, we can hit zoom to selection and it'll zoom in on that circle and then we can zoom back out to the page. So very handy there. This is our preview button. So if we are going to run a job, if we're gonna engrave the circle, we can hit the preview button and it's gonna show us exactly how that circle is going to be engraved and how long it's going to take. And again, we're gonna spend a lot more time on this later. I'm just kind of showing you guys the basics here really quick. We've already covered these two. So we have our general light burn settings that pull up settings for light burn. And then we have our device settings. So for our EasyCAD controller, we have group and ungroup here. We have mirrors. We have our alignment tools for aligning things. If we create a shape like a square, uh, or I guess, well, that's more of a rectangle, but if we create a shape like a rectangle, we have the position here. So you can actually change the position numerically if you want to, for some reason, you can change the position numerically. We can also set the width of something. So right now it's at 27 millimeters. We can make it 30 or we could make it 50 and you can set the height of something. So we can make it 50 by 50 and actually make a true square. If you want to change one dimension and have the other dimension match. So if I change the height to 20 right now, only the height's gonna change. We can actually lock this little aspect ratio or proportion lock right here. And then if I change the height to 20, the width is gonna to change to 20 as well. So that keeps things in proportion, which is very important to know. So definitely wanna pay attention to that. Over here, you can also increase or decrease the size by the percentage. So if you know that you need something to be exactly half as big as it is right now, you could type 50% in and it's going to reduce the corresponding value by 50%. So that'll work for you too. When resizing, this little box right here controls which reference point we are resizing to and from. So for example, we have a 20 by 20 square here. If I change this square, we'll lock our proportions. If I change our square to 10 by 10, see how it went from the center in? It shrunk the square on all sides equally. If we wanted that to say shrink down to the top left, we can do that. So I'll undo control Z and then we can do it again. But this time I'm gonna click the top left node in this little grid and we'll change that value to 10 one more time. And now you can see it shrunk it from the outer edge to the top left. 
And you can do that for anything. You can do that for any of these squares. So, you know, let's try just left instead of top left. So let's do the left node here, and then we'll set this to 10 and hit enter. And it shrunk from the top, the right, and the bottom, but not from the left. So it's just kind of an anchor, essentially. It's an anchor point that tells you, hey, when you resize, resize based on this point. So we can go another one, we can do five. Uh, let's just reduce this to five millimeters and it should move everything except for that bottom right corner now. So there we go. So we resized to five millimeter square, but the bottom right corner did not move. Generally, the center node is the one that I prefer, but you could certainly choose to do any node if you're used to it working some way or another based on the vector editing software that you use. Uh, that's just fine, but that's what that does. So if you need to rotate by a very specific angle, you could put something in here like 19.56 degrees and hit enter, and it's gonna rotate by exactly that amount. So a uh, precision way to do your rotations right there. Here we have our system of measurement for our light burn setup. So we can swap between standard here and metric right there, and you can see the ruler kind of popping back and forth. That's also gonna change the positioning and the sizing windows over here. So very easy to just kind of jump back and forth. Uh, you can see a bunch of the numbers on the page change, but we do like to stick with metric here on Laser Everything. So we'll leave that at millimeters for now. And then the next box over, we have some font controls. So we can look at controlling some text. The text tool is right over here on the left and we can grab it and start typing. So we could just say Laser Everything just like that, and that is quite big. So we can select that text and we can reduce the size. We can make it bold, italic, all uppercase. We can change the font. If we'd like to change the font, we can do that to something like Futura, which is kind of our laser everything font there. So all the standard stuff that you're used to seeing. And the welded button does something very specific for script fonts. So let's take a look at a script font, okay? When we have the welded turned on for the font, it's going to weld the overlapped areas of these letters together automatically. It's very, very handy. And there aren't a lot of reasons why you would want to turn this off for normal day-to-day -day use, but if we do turn it off, you can now see that the overlaps show up. And in Lightburn, if two pens are overlap one another, it actually negates the space and this area won't be marked here. That's really bad. Uh, that's not what we want at all. If we convert these letters to paths, uh, we can then come in and move this out of the way. This will make it very easy for you to see when those two blacks pass over one another. Uh, anything that isn't actually filled with that filled rendering that we turned on, that's not gonna mark. And that's really bad. So. When we come back in here and we can turn welded back on, it's going to fuse those overlaps together for us automatically. And that's going to save us from making a lot of mistakes. So that is something that, again, it's here. You can turn it off. I'm not sure why you would want to, but you certainly could if you needed to for some reason. So let's do a fresh example here, guys. I'm going to change the font up. Let's do something like Callisto and we can type some text here. So we'll do another laser, and then if we hit the enter key, it'll move to a new line, and we can type everything. And we have our horizontal spacing and our vertical spacing. So if we up the horizontal spacing, it'll move those letters further apart. If we lower it, it will bring them closer together. Same thing with the vertical spacing. If we move that up, it's gonna move the two lines further apart. And if we move that down, it's gonna bring them closer together. A very handy tool for sure. We also have our text alignment, so we can align to the left or the right or center. And we also have some advanced text options over here, which we will cover at a later date. Over here, we have some special functions for light burn. So we have our rotary setup, uh, print and cut setup, and our cylinder correction. This is project mark for those of you that don't know. And now let's talk about the toolbar really quick. So we've got the basic pen tool for sketching out shapes. You can sketch out different shapes, make outlines and create whole shapes. Very easy to use uh, in order to stop drawing because I'm continuing to draw my line here. You just hit the escape button and that'll move you out of being able to draw that line. So the pen tool is really handy for building custom shapes. We do have our basic shape tools over here. So we have the rectangle tool and the ellipse tool. This tool down here is the node editor. So if we grab our pen tool and we do something like a simple triangle, we can go ahead and close that off. 
Uh, if we select the node editor, double clicking on that shape will give us access to the node and we can go ahead and move the individual nodes around. We have our text tool here, which we've already taken a brief look at. So we can type our text, no problem, there we go. We have a very handy measuring tool over here. So if we'd like to measure something like the length of this text, we can start at one point and drag it across. And snapping makes this very easy. So we can get a segment length there of 27.2 millimeters. We also have our basic Boolean operations. So if we have some overlapping shapes, we can weld them together to make them one shape. We also have subtract, which is going to subtract the bottom object from the top one. And we have the intersect tool. So if we click that, it's going to only leave the intersection and it's going to delete the two parent shapes. Once we have some artwork that we like, if we want to jig things up and do more at once, the array tool is a great tool that will help us get that done. Here we can set the number of columns and the number of rows that is reproduced by our array. There's again, a lot of options in here that we can talk about, like our spacing. You can set the spacing along the X axis and the spacing along the Y axis to spread those out or bring them closer together. Again, just like a ton of different ways that you can use the array tool. Setting the number of columns and rows along with the X and Y spacing are the most basic functions of the array, but there's so much more that you can do with the array tool. Again, a more in-depth tutorial is absolutely required on this and we will approach that at another time. I know we're just flying through this, guys. We're, we're really whipping through right now. Um, and again, we're going to come back. I just want to get you basically familiar with the different components of being able to create very basic pieces of artwork, right? Very, very basic pieces of artwork. Uh, we will do a full artwork tutorial within Lightburn. Uh, very, very soon. It will be part of this crash course, but it'll probably be a little later on. Once you're actually up and running and using the laser, we'll cover some of the more advanced techniques on how to actually make like nice stuff with light burn. But for right now, I just want you to know your way around so that this isn't horrifying to you when you load the program up. I, I want you to be able to look around and just kind of feel good that you know what things are. Maybe even if you don't know how to utilize them to the fullest of their abilities yet, that's okay. Uh, I just want you to feel a little more comfortable in the space. So that's about all we need to talk about for this episode. I promise we're going to expand on all of this much, much more, but we still aren't marking with our laser yet. So we have a few more things that we need to do before we can get into the fun kind of art prep stuff. Next episode, we're going to be talking about cuts and layers, how to use these different colored pens down here, and actually how to mark with some of the basic laser commands. So once we do that, we can actually start kind of personalizing personalizing the configuration of our laser because we'll be marking. Um, once we're marking, that's when we're really going to be able to dial things in and, and get our lasers working super well with our new Lightburn software. So that's all I've got for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this episode of the Lightburn for Galvo Crash Course. If you got value out of this one, guys, don't forget to smash the like button. Let everybody else know the content is good. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified the next time we add to the Lightburn for Galvo Crash Course. If you want to join the Laser Everything community, hang out, talk about all these cool new features and stuff that we've got going on with Lightburn for Galvo, there are links to our absolutely 100% free Facebook group and Discord server down in the description, right next to the link to the Laser Master Academy, the number one way to support the channel. So if you want to support the channel and help us continue doing what we love doing here, which is teaching you guys how to use your lasers, uh, consider signing up. It starts at eight bucks a month and every dollar of it goes to making sure that we can continue to do what we love to do. And uh, we, we really do love doing it so much. And all of the information that we put out on the YouTube channel for everyone for free is thanks to our members over at the Laser Master Academy. If you want to go check that out, you can sign up right now over at masters.lasereverything.net. Hope to see you over there, and I hope you enjoy the next episode of the Lightburn for Galvo Crash Course.